You're catching up with Rude Dits and Laws for breakfast. Thanks to Sterling Homes. Make the move and visit sterlinghomes.com.au today. Oh, hello. What a Friday morning we've got for you. Good morning, Laws. Rue. Good morning. G'day, Everybody. Dits. Good morning. Oh, big, uh, big morning after a quiz night, oh, Laws. I'm knackered. Is your brain mate. hurting? You answered so many questions last night. Incorrectly. <laughs> I had the best oh. time. The heaps good quiz at the Arca Bar, all well, thanks to Credit Union SA. And were arguments galore at our table. Oh my God, we were so, we were all bickering. <laughs> because it was one of those oh, little, um, funny. it had a buzzer. So whoever had the buzzer was like. Multiple choice yeah. on your buzzer press. A, B, C, D, or E. I oh, know, by the end of it, we were all cowards. We we're didn't want to hold the buzzer. Oh, press, press, press B. Yeah. Press C. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? And you lost points for how slow you were. Did it you was win so or not? Not quite. No, we didn't. You know and boy, what? Boy, was Loz competitive. Oh, she so really? desperately wanted to win. My yeah. parents had a table. Yeah, I met Canadian <laughs> Cat, and they they lost everything on the horses because you could have a round yeah. where you bet all oh, everything. That's on the, that was the Roo round. They put it all on the horses and lost everything. Yeah. Oh, God, it made me laugh. Gamble responsibly. I know, gamble responsibly. Try and give you a tip later on the show today. We've got Maddie Nix coming on. He uh, alluded to it at eight thirty yesterday. There could be a little Crows announcement. Yeah. He signed a contract extension. We'll have a chat to him today. They played tonight against the Cats and they need the win. So we'll have a chat to Nixie Oof. a Can I just later on. Tell a little funny aside. Things that happen off air in this radio show, but we got a, an anonymous uh, story come through about a rumour. Mm. New Crows coach, mm. someone, I won't know because it'd just be scandalous to know. And Ruth sort of went, yeah, I wouldn't go to air with that if I was you. And we went, oh, is oh it, okay. Is it so true? Right. He said, oh, he said, I just wouldn't go to air with it. So clearly, <laughs> which is right, Rue knew something in the background. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't go <laughs> with that other name. 10 minutes later. Yeah, yeah Matthew Nix, new <laughs> That's right. Sign a contract. Yeah. yeah. And poor fans, Travis Boak will join us ahead of his 350th on Sunday as well. Test drive the all-new, all-electric Toyota BZ4X at Peter Kittle Toyota. Get all the news you need. 104.7 Triple M. Hello, Adelaide. No one knows Adelaide like these guys. Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Laws. Overnight news. They say our unemployment in South Australia quite often drops in February because of the fringe and all the things that are happening around Adelaide, but no one expected a drop of 0.8% down to 3.2% unemployment, which is a record for South Australia and the lowest in Australia. So... A very surprising uh, number yesterday, which I guess shows how strong our economy is. But when you speak to a lot of people out there, they say quite the difference. So I don't know if... Well, what we do know is if you work one hour a week, they call you employed. Mm. Oh. So whether it's uh, a lot of part-time stuff or what, but the number's very low and does one not hour. give any confidence to anyone that interest rates will drop soon, unfortunately. I didn't if know you were legally strong. allowed to work one hour. I thought you had to do a minimum well, of three hours. Sorry, just to explain what you said then. I thought if we had low unemployment, I thought that was a good economic indicator. It is, but it's not good for lowering interest. You lower interest rates when you're going to stimulate the economy. So the economy is good. So Our system's set up so that it has it. to be bad for it to be good, Dits. It's very right. confusing. Okay. Yeah, I don't like to think too hard about it. No, right. As my brain explodes. Yeah, I've got a headache thinking well, about think that. Think about a Thai massage then. All right, Bruce mm. Lerman, uh, go back to the... Uh, <laughs> the there have been hell? so many things written about this story. We know the uh, Brittany Higgins case. But you remember he, the uh, famous, infamous interview we did on a Sunday night on the Channel 7 Spotlight program, mm-hmm. interviewed by Liam Bartlett, and he said, no holds barred, ask me anything, nothing's you know, off the table, and yep. it was all warts and all and whatever. Mm-hmm. whatever. It's been revealed. Sam Maiden, who uh, will not let this go, has now done a story overnight that uh, a seven credit card was used uh, for Mr. Lerman and uh, one of the seven uh, employees to visit a Thai masseuse. They spent a thousand bucks on a seven credit card. Now, there's no suggestion that anything wrong has been done. I just got a massage. Yeah. Can I say that nothing's changed since I was working at Channel 7 for the seven credit card that was used to go to a Thai massage? But that's that's an aside. But. Uh, anyway, uh, and again, it's, there's no suggestion. But, but you, you know, you yeah, sort of conjures up thoughts of checkbook journalism and uh, inducements and whatever. But if you do an interview on Channel 7 on a Sunday night, I suppose you're allowed to have a massage, aren't you? And who pays for it? Is, How uh, stupid is it? Just ridiculously dumb. Do you think? One of the dumber things I've ever heard. Yeah. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with having a massage. I need a Thai massage loose. after the quiz night last no, but, night. No, but no. It's just who pays Absolutely. For it. But when you're, in, when you're in trial for potentially sexually assaulting someone and then you go and potentially have what looks like on a receipt uh, a massage that is not necessarily your stock standard massage because $1,000 for a massage is quite Good expensive. massage. 
Yeah, well, I yeah. bet it was great. Must have done his feet a few times. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, <laughs> Get right in there, love, for a thousand just, bucks. <laughs> you just wouldn't put that on the company car. I mean, that's just insane. Well, someone's got to pay. Cash. Cash. But it turns out they did. So Channel 7 went back, sent someone back the next day and said, can we reverse that credit card? <laughs> yeah. You know? Right, so um, there is something. And we want it. to pay cash now. Yeah. So and something. pay a bonus. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, now a lot yeah. is said about Elon Musk, and I don't follow it that closely. I get confused by everything he's created and what he does and what he's... But you, a couple of weeks ago, there was a talk about a brain chip that he's coming up with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a thing called... It's called Neuralink. Anyway, what's happened overnight? They've released a nine-minute video of a paraplegic um, playing chess purely just by looking at it, like using his mind and this brain chip. So they're, they're wow. saying that uh, they're starting to be able to do things and... His goal is to make paraplegics, quadriplegics walk again with this brain chip. So it's that's incredible. what they're working on, yeah. I mean, it gives a lot of power to whoever's controlling the chip, but it's, it's an amazing thing. If, yeah. if is it can... the individual controlling it? Yes, with the brain chip. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Are just you... thinking about looking at that pawn, for example, on the chessboard and moving it. Yeah, so it's right. like your normal oh. person. Oh. Mm. You could have gone talking about porn Bishop. and Thai massage is a bit too close here. <laughs> I need to explain porn, porn. in P-A-W-N. chess. P-A-W-N. Yeah. And a yeah. Thai massage I'll in the last conversation. I'll give you a porn lesson during the ad break. I'll tell you about Please what porn. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Yeah. Let's move on to Too the... many pawns. And I'm a, you know, I feel like I'm a pawn in this show at times. Yeah, There's different do? ways we can use that word, Ru. Yeah. Yes and no. Don't worry. I understand it. <laughs> yeah. We don't say the letter R in this country. It's a bit of an issue. Don't bring prawn into it. In no, 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 no. Oh, okay. The raw prawn. Okay. Well, you could head up. If you want a raw prawn, you could probably have it in space now. Apparently, there's going to be a Michelin star restaurant up in one of those little floating rocket ships, 100,000 feet up in the air. Really? 100,000 feet? Yes. Hmm. So a normal flight is about 31 to 42,000 feet. Mm-hmm. It'll be double that. So you'll be looking down at the earth from very high altitude. A restaurant in space. A restaurant in I've space. I've heard about this. Space VIP. Oh, no. So they've teamed up with two Michelin star chefs. Mm. And um, it's about $500,000 a person. Mm. And, um, yeah, it just tells me that we've just gone too far as a society. Foods good dits. Yeah. Apparently but- no atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Gee. Should have stopped at Sorry. porn. You should have um, stayed at the quiz night. <laughs> no, no, that was good. That was good. Oh, well no. done. You that, know what? That is a bloody kid's joke from Joe's joke. It is. Wow. I oh, know. So I get all my best material. <laughs> <laughs> Test drive the all new, all electric Toyota BZ4X at Peter Kittle Toyota. The top five things we've learnt on Rue, Dits and Loz this week. Number five, comedian Lemo was on and we learnt Tasmania have a new AFL team. The name of your football club, Tasmania Devils. Port right now have a mortgage over in excess. Uh-huh. You sing the song before every game. Yeah. But now you know what's going to happen down in Tassie. What? Before every game, they'll be singing this. Oh. oh. How do you know they won't be singing this song, Lemo? <laughs> well, what about Loz's suggestion? Are you sure their song's not going to be Kissing Cousins by Elvis? Oh. <laughs> oh, but we're kissing cousins. That's what makes it all. Number four. Wednesdays is Kids Jokes Day. It's time for Joe's Joke. And Rue's kids, Tom and Rocco, normally do it. Tom, where's Rocco? But Tom had to go solo. Oh, so he got okay. his grumpy pants on today, has he? No. And we learnt Tom Rusciuto is a man of few words. <laughs> Just going to do it all by yourself. Yep. We might have to call this segment... Tom's, Tom's jokes. jokes, yeah. What do you reckon? Get rid of Joe? No. Does the Easter Bunny go all the way to Port Augusta? Yeah. Ooh, does he bring his chocolate eggs? Yeah. Oh. He's been seen on the back of a ute up there a couple of times, Easter Bunny, hasn't he? Yeah. Going around all the shacks? Yeah. Oh, this is tough work. Rue, change the subject. <laughs> you, don't you want to go to the yeah. go-karts? Yeah. Right. You're saying yeah a lot today. Yeah. You going to the footy Friday night? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Number three, our brekkie team read a lot of ads for our commercial clients. Check out Sterling Homes. And we learnt you should always stick to the script, unless the script is telling you to ad lib a little bit, maybe. They offer build time guarantees oh, as quick no. as 34 weeks from the slap poor laws. Yeah, so feel free to make it your own by using your lingo. Just remember to stick to the messaging, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you reading from? The ad lib points. <laughs> feel free to make it your own by using your lingo. Just remember to stick to the messaging, please. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you reading up here where we're up to? Because I wanted to chuck in something extra for him. <laughs> 
<laughs> Number two. Apparently the pandas are going to stick around. Well, it looks like it's a black and white decision with Adelaide's pandas, Wong Wong and Funi, set to stay on at the zoo. And we learnt we've been getting their names wrong. Wong Wong and Funi? Yeah. I thought it was always Wang Wang and Funi. No. Why has everyone said Wang Wang? That's how it's spelled. So we've been getting uh, it wrong, Wong Wong. You are wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Penny Wong, one of our ministers, has actually been doing the deal with the Chinese <laughs> diplomat That's at the right. moment. And is I her just... last name spelled W-O-N-G, yes, though? Yes, oh, yes. Okay, so I've got I it. just thought there were too many Wongs in the one yeah. Yeah. Seven segment. Yeah, and they got go. all mixed up. Oh, well, two Wongs don't make a white. Oh. Number one. We learnt about a cold case on Triple M this week. First, Loz brought us this piece of information. So I think we've all known someone who's um, put laxatives in someone's food or drink as a joke. Tex Walker does it to me. Yeah, it's a crime. <laughs> Is it? Oh. Good. That's what I wanted to oh, That's right. This cold case goes back to 2018. Even when a case has been buried for years. Detective Rush. I'm working an old case. If you weren't around back then, here's the audio of when Taylor Walker gave Ditz laxatives in his coffee. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Here's yeah, the right audio yeah. from 2018. <laughs> Did you what? put laxette in my coffee? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, did no, you? Uh, did it work? Did he worked all right. <laughs> On the Gold Coast, I'm trying to enjoy my holiday and I spent it from the bathroom looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. Well, don't play games. <laughs> Fast forward to the present day. And we confronted Tex Walker. We contacted a lawyer just to see what kind of crime it was. Hi, it's Peter Jackson from DBH Lawyers here. Section 32C of the Criminal Law Consolidation Act makes food and drink spiking in South Australia against the law. Mm. This includes when people add alcohol or other substances into someone else's drink or food without their knowledge. The penalty for that offence is up to three years' imprisonment. Mm. Have you got a lawyer, Tex, or not? <laughs> Speak to my lawyer. <laughs> well, you might want to. I you don't brought, need to speak to him. You brought Dittmar in a coffee yeah, this morning. I, I, Should he keep I drinking it? Drink or this a... with trepidation. Should go off in about oh, <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be running with your bum check squeeze. Uh, what do you reckon, Tom? Should Tex go to prison for his crimes? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the top five things we've learned on Rue, Dits and Loz this week. Uh, you didn't miss the next oh. day. Yeah, uh, <laughs> And you, you were, were on away. the throne the next day. Have you thought about that? Oh, don't worry, there's a connection. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. I haven't stopped thinking about it. Oh, no. Travis Boke started playing for Port Adelaide so long ago that John Howard was the Prime Minister. Boke has a shot at goal, <laughs> and he's put a clue. Oh, Along the way, he's picked up three All-Australian Blazers, two John Cahill medals, and was Brownlow medal runner-up in 2020. Travis Boke kicks the goal for Port Adelaide in game number 200. Getting ready to celebrate his 350th game. Boke has put it through. Please welcome to Triple M Breakfast from Port Adelaide Football Club. Boke! Travis Boke. Oh, can I just add to that intro? Ken Hinckley said this week that the club may not even be around if it wasn't for mm. Travis Boke. Yeah. What an enormous thing to say. Bokey, congratulations. Well done and uh, thanks for talking to us. Good morning. No worries at all. Thanks for having me on. That was a big thing for Ken to say, wasn't it? Yeah, I was uh, I was a bit shocked uh, by it all. I, I think when uh, when he came out and said there was actually nearly a tear in my eye. But um, there's certainly a lot of a lot of people around in that time that uh, that sort of propelled that club forward. I was just um, just one part of it all. Just uh, missing that elusive premiership, Bokey. That's what everyone plays for. Shane Crawford got it in his last game or his last year. I think Joel Selwood got another one, even though he'd had a few before that. Is that what's driving you? Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, you know, that's what uh, that's what we're playing footy for, and I think um, certainly over the years, you sort of, uh, I mean, coming in 07, playing one straight away, you thought it was going to be pretty easy, and then having a big absence since then, it's you know how hard it is to win, and um, you know we've come close a few times, but there's uh, yeah, they're they're bloody hard to win, and that's that's the ultimate ultimate dream to bring bring back the cup for for the Port Adelaide fans and the footy club. Now, 2007 was a long time ago. I was just looking at what happened that year. So the iPhone came out that year. <laughs> Britney Spears shaved her head that year. That was the year Britney shaved her head. Yeah, that long ago. Yeah, Rue, that was the year you retired. Oh, I had hair. Yeah. I was in year 11 in high school. I look back at her and I go, who was she? Like, total stranger. Are you 85, Bokey? Or Bokey? <laughs> when you, Thanks for making me feel old. No, no, but when you look back at when you started, do you recognise that boy? Like, how much have you changed? 
Yeah, I'll look at the photos and go, wow, what was I doing with my hair? <laughs> yeah, me um, too, don't worry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, uh, I was talking about it the other day, I think I chemically straightened the hair, so oh, uh, I've, wow. I've progressed, <laughs> um, matured a little bit since then, so that's yeah. been good. But no, nah, look, I was just a young kid just trying to get a kick back then and you sort of, yeah, you do mature um, pretty quickly in a footy club and uh, it's been one hell of a journey, but i um, very thankful for everyone who sort of helped me along the way and, and get me to this position. In start of your career, you're trying to get a game, then you're trying to play well, and then you're trying to be the best player. Uh, and then towards the end, you try and give back and you try and uh, bring kids along. You've been the best that I can see at Port Adelaide since I've come into the AFL with what you've done taking players overseas. Jason Orn Francis last year, Zach Butters, Connor Rosie before that. But probably even a bigger role and a harder role is when you take players in younger players and, and you've done that with Sam Powell Pepper who was you know needed to be straightened up a little bit didn't have the best upbringing is that a natural thing for you Bokey or are you just hell-bent on doing everything you can for the club to be as good as it can oh look I think there's no doubt that um we we get our values and, and what we sort of stand for from our parents and there's no doubt mum and dad sort of taught me um how to to sort of be a good person and try and give back and, and care for people. But I think you, you sort of learn and mature over the way. And I think, um, you know, being in the footy club for, for so long, I think what we understand is you learn a bit, you sort of go through the hard times, you, you got to learn uh, the ins and outs, but then it's important to share that. And I think that's, um, you know, sort of definitely towards the end of my career, I want to make sure that I leave the club and, and, and other players in, in really good position. And I think over the journey, you've got to make sure that, all that information and what you've learned along the way, you've got to give back to someone else to, for them to then pass that on as well. So, um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to have good people around me and the club have brought good people in and I've just, uh, yeah, tried to help out as much as I can. Bokey, the big thing I admire about you, I know you've spoken about this a lot this week, so I apologise about the question, but it's this Geelong thing. You know, any young kid that's lived overseas or away from home playing sport, there is the homesickness. You had your family at home. We we know the situation about your dad. You loved Geelong. You're back from, you know, Selwood and his delegation fly into Adelaide. Well, I guess my question, if I cut to the chase, is was, what was the defining thing? What, you know, you'd played in a grand final where we lost by 119 points. I've, when, when I saw all this happening, I thought, he has to go home, surely. You know, there was so much pull and draw to get you back there. Was there a defining thing? Was there something that you said, no, I'm staying? Look, I think... Um... Like the, there's no doubt the decision was really hard, but I think for the majority of that year, um, it was it was always like leaning towards staying at Port. I think um, you know when you think about purpose and and what you really want to do, that was kind of the pull to stay. And I think um, you know once Mum and and my sisters and my family were were really comfortable with me still staying over here and and supporting me here, I felt really comfortable to then make that decision. But the purpose to, to stay at the club, to make sure that we get it out of where it was and, and try and propel it forward. Um, you know, it's like you can't leave something in a bad position. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just couldn't do that. And along with the other boys as well. And that was kind of the reason, that the purpose to try and to make sure that we, we turn the footy club around. Well, it is one of the most loyal and yep. great things I've seen. Seriously, it was, it was magnificent. So well done to you. And look, I, I think you're one of the people that the whole football world, you know, wants to do well this weekend. It's not just Port people, and I mean that. So good on you, mate. Congratulations on 350, and, and maybe there are still quite a few more to come. Let's hope so. Thanks very much for having me. I really good on appreciate you, the support over the years as well. Good well, on you, uh, Bokey. Mate. All the best for Sunday yeah, and all the best for luck. the future. Good luck, mate. Thank you. There he is, Travis Pope. If you watched 7 News last night, or maybe you see it in the ties of this morning, but uh, in our industry, we've lost a fella, a cameraman called Rob Brown. RB covered some of the world's biggest stories for seven over this last three decades. He was tough, he was brilliant, award-winning. Those closest to Rob thought the cancer was just about the only thing that could have brought him down. We will leave you with some of RB's most memorable pictures, from South Australia to Afghanistan to Iraq, East Timor, the death of Nelson Mandela, and no less than eight Olympic Games. A legendary newsman gone too soon. The vanguard of Australia's troop deployment moving into... Now, often in our industry, you'll hear things like, oh, he was a good fellow, or gee, he was good at his job. Uh, mm -hmm. This is far bigger than that. And I'll tell you, I had lunch with Bruce Abernathy yesterday, and there are people just broken mm -hmm. and in tears, and I'm serious about that. Uh, this bloke was so respected and loved. Um, I want to mention things like uh, Banda Arche. 
he flew in there straight away with Jess Adamson, who we all know. Yeah. Uh, Chris Reason, you'll see on Seven News a lot from international ports and from, you know, any big story, ring RB, ring Rob mm-hmm. Brown in, in Adelaide, get him, we need him. Yeah. So uh, there are stories, I, I could talk so what, about this the bloke best for camera, hours. One of the best cameramen. Or... But fearless, went into war-torn zones, uh, band of Arche, 225,000 dead bodies, and he and Jess Adamson stood in the middle of it and filmed it and reported every My day. My God. One night, Rue, in the Middle East, Hezbollah kidnapped him, put a hood over his head and <gasps> drove him hours out into well, the bush. Terrorist group. Yeah. And they took him because they actually wanted him to take pictures and send back to the rest of the world. He thought he was never going to be seen again, but they drove him back after he'd taken <gasps> these pictures. He did clever things. He flew into South Africa for the Oscar Pistorius case and rented a room opposite the courthouse and stayed there for days and days and, and was awake oh, for 24 7, waiting for him. it all to happen. And then other networks around the world caught on it and rang him and he said, yeah, you can rent a bit of my... So NBC <laughs> from America and places around the world rang him and said, can we have a bit of your room? Yeah. He said, yeah, but it'll cost you. Well, this guy thought outside the square. He was clever. He was smart. Fearless. But um, look, eight Olympic Games. Um, his last story, I reckon, the big story internationally was the crash of MH17. He was in Ukraine. He just had a nose for it. Yeah. He knew where to go. He would fly. He would just pick up and go. Um, and yeah, as I said, fearless. He was only told about three months ago he had cancer and it all happened so quickly. Oh my God. Look, what hasn't come out, and I say this with all of the utmost respect, is because he's Rob Brown, the cameraman mm. and great fella and family man, but he's the father of Tex Walker's wife, Ellie. Mm. And I think out of respect, probably that hasn't been reported. And maybe I shouldn't say that this morning, but I think it's important to point that out because obviously Tex and Ellie are going through a shocking time at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to mention that we feel, and, and his wife, Vicky, um, and Ellie's sister as well. It now, this says bloke, so much about him that the reports haven't even mentioned that because right. he was so and well loved. that's why I say it. Yeah. This bloke was a genius and he was a, he was a workaholic. He was brilliant. Um, he was there for Ch- the Chappelle, Chappelle Corby case. Wow. He was at Nelson Mandela's death. You, you mentioned it. This bloke did sure. it. And he was only 62 years of mm. age. So just an absolute... Legend in our industry and, a, and an incredible person, really. Yeah, too young that and too fast. That'll be tough for the family. So all the best, all our hearts from everyone from Triple M. All yep. the best to the uh, Brown family. Triple M Breakfast with Rue, Dits and Loz. When figuring out how long the Crows should extend Matty Nick's contract for, they ask the best in the biz, Loz. Yes, all right. I love him. He's got charisma. Got, got charisma. Charisma. Okay. Like five years? Or <laughs> yeah, five one, years. Two. Five. Yeah, no, five's good. Yeah, uh, five. Two out of five ain't bad. Please welcome newly re-signed Crows coach, Matty Nix. Hey. Oh, Matty Nix, how do you respond to that? That's a tough one. That's um, <laughs> I was always a huge fan of the loss. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh gee, You might get a new manager, Nixie, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, no, not a bad idea at all. Really. I'll give you my BSB and account number for that uh, 20% then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Nixie. <laughs> Two-year extension. Um Probably takes a little bit of weight off your shoulders in some ways and puts a bit more on to get the job done now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it depends on how you look at it. It brings a bit more pressure. You know, we're a good young group. We're looking forward to you know this sort of high level of expectation. And um, I think this season is one where we're really looking forward to getting into. Uh, coaching an AFL club has its pressures, you know, no matter which club it is. But the Adelaide job has always been a big one. It's a whole city. I know we've got Port Adelaide here as well, but it really is a... The focus, a fishbowl of a whole city. Do you do you embrace it? Do you do you like it? Do you welcome it? Yeah, look, I, I do. I, I really love. I mean, I grew up in Adelaide. I was born here, so I've known that for I guess my whole life. So I'm looking forward to what we can hopefully give back over the next few years. Next, you're very composed, uh, coach. I mean, last week, for instance, a lot of people would have, uh, a lot of coaches would have went off at a play at the players after the performance in the first half or first three quarters against Gold Coast. But you see the positives. Yeah, tell us about your coaching yeah. style. Yeah, there's a fair bit of talk about how relaxed I am. Um, some aren't in the rooms at halftime, <laughs> so <laughs> there there are moments where. You know, I too can lose composure and, and or sometimes intentionally come with a little bit more intensity. But um, overall, I've, I've found the best results are achieved by doing it together. Um, you know, the game's not as easy as it looks. And sometimes when you're sitting up in the grandstand and you're watching, it's, um, you know, it's easy to be critical and it's easy to be you know, get fired up and angry. So uh, that's the reason now I'm down on the bench is to get amongst our players, make sure I'm on the same level. You know, the game's a really tough one from down there. So I, I can actually be a lot more connected mm. uh, with our group there. And so I can, you know, we can share ideas at half time. We did that on the weekend. We were really disappointing first half. Uh, and then 
you know, to stand around at halftime. We had enough information. We knew exactly what was what was going wrong. It was just a matter of us sorting through that and getting it right in the second half. And in the end, we, you know, we're probably 10 minutes too late. It would have been nice to have another five or 10 minutes on the clock and, you know, we might have run over them, but it wasn't to be. So, you know, disappointing for this week, but we'll, we'll um, butter up and go again now. Uh, Nixie, I do captain the Crows um, in a final after my very best mate and cousin died a couple of days before, and it was a, one of the toughest things I've had to do. Taylor Walker has to play tonight, two days after his wife's father uh, passed away. Have you had a chat to Tex? How is he? Has he going about it? What if, what's your advice been to Tex on on uh, on playing football tonight? Yeah, it, um, I mean, as you know, Ruse, you said it's it's a really tough thing to go through, um, and then to, to have to you know front up and play footy is, is another challenge in itself. So, sometimes I, I have had a chat to Tex. Um, I was able to sit with him on you know during the week and just um, I guess download on on what it's meant. It's it's a it's a big thing. It's a really big thing for him. He's um, yeah, he was a big part of Taylor's life, so. It's, a, it's a, going to be a challenge. Um, but at the same time, sometimes the best thing to do is actually get out there yep. and play footy and, and take your mind off things and, and get amongst and do what it is you love doing and get amongst your teammates. And I'm sure Tex will, will go that way and um, you know, we hope he comes out and, and enjoys and plays a good game. Yeah, mm. strapping that black armband is an amazing feeling yeah. when you put it on and what it means for you and you, you relive what you're doing and why you're doing it, and it can bring everyone together. It's an amazing feeling, and hopefully the boys can draw on that at some stage throughout the game and get the job done tonight and uh, get the season back on track. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what the guy, the players will do as well. It's a real, you know, an opportunity to show your respect uh, mm. and go out and you know play footy for, for, for Tyler and his family as well. Nixie, before you leave us, uh, rather than measure, you know, it on wins and losses, or did you play finals? Did you win a premiership in in the after the extra two years? What would you like Crows fans to think? You know, Matty Nix did this, or Matty Nix achieved what? Where do you, where do you think you'll be? You and the club? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great question, Ditch. Look, I, I mean, it's, didn't they doctor right? a photo with you, <laughs> Nixie, at uh, the presentation? Tell them about that. <laughs> yeah, they may have had a little bit of fun with the photo. There's a, there are a lot of photos in the presentation, unfortunately. <laughs> There's a good chance to take the piss out of their coach. But <laughs> no, um, oh, look, I mean, we're all aiming for the ultimate. That's that's the dream, and, and I have that dream as well as a coach. Is I want to win a premiership. I want to do it with this footy club. You know, there would be nothing like it. Uh, I, I know what I know how it played out when they've when they've won their most recent or the, the last two together, and it was um, yeah, you know, it's huge for this city. So we're going to keep aiming high. That's the dream. We'll continue to push for that. But yeah, hopefully we don't have to dock drop a photo. Hopefully we can. Have to <laughs> hold All right, mate. Well done. Congratulations on the two years. Good luck tonight. Um, yep. All stars tonight. Uh, yep. Yeah. Good luck, oh, Nixie. Congratulations. Okay, Let's Thanks, go. guys. Appreciate it. There Jeez. he is, Crows coach Matty Nix. The voice of the suburbs caused a real stir earlier this week. Ooh. The question that we've been speaking about this week in the suburbs is, would you tell someone their partner is cheating on them? Now, the voice went on to tell us a story which was quite um, alarming and unfortunately not an uncommon story. It's about a woman she knows who was contacted by a stranger and told, your partner's cheating on you. I know it. I've got the receipts. I've got the details. And she told her all of that. And, uh, yeah, they found out who it was. You know, women that have been cheated on, they're a different force to be reckoned yeah. with. They are like, oh, nah, I'm going to call that out. I'm going to let them know. Men are cr- A woman scorned. <laughs> they find out who, who it was, who, she, who he's cheating with. Um, unfortunately, it was someone that lived next door to him. No. So, uh... mm. She was... Gee willikers. Gee whiz. Do you tell? Lou's gone hard. Gee whiz. Oh, he's, he's Gee whiz. Gee Wow. Gosh. Um, got the first one next gosh, door. Golly. Um, now. Pick up the paper. Do any men cheat? No, women cheat too. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, just listen to that story. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think in this so the, situation. So the, the it's the one voice that, of the bird. The one that he cheated with, was she cheating too? Um, Don't know. Well, this is the thing. We don't know. The other person is still complicit, but they're not the one who who's in the relationship who owes anything to the person who's oh, been cheated on. Mm. You know this, do you, from listening to that story? 
Oh. No. I'm just thinking out aloud. No, I'm just What's going on? Why is Dick suddenly I'm not, in, like... no, no, I'm not interrogating you. I'm just thinking out aloud. <laughs> it all sounded like he and men and women, you know, are all. No, no, no. Women and... are certainly okay. imperfect. No, I just wanted and, and to find do out. Yeah. But I think... Do you tell? Do you tell do you is you what tell? the question we're asking. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, yeah. I have, have you told? I have told in the past. Have you? It was an awful experience, and I don't know. Well, you have you, to do what it. What do you mean awful? Or did, well, did you get the outcome you wanted or, or that you thought was right? I found out and I went to the bloke and I said, I could have gone straight to her, but I'm coming to you and I'm giving you two weeks. Yeah, right. And you need to tell her in two weeks. And I, You gave him an order, mate. I did because I didn't want to do it. Was um, it your friend that yeah. she, this bloke was yeah. cheating Otherwise, with? Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten involved. It's none of my beeswax. But this was just, ugh. Oh, God. So I said, you got two weeks. And he did tell her, but it took him, I think, nine days. Mm. And I was just sitting by the phone going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, please. Did it turn out okay for your friend? They stayed together. Did they? Yes. I am not ex- ex- heaps close with them anymore. <laughs> mm. I think I might have kind of well, been. they're still so together. Would, yeah. Would you do it again? You have to. But you ha- when you go into it, you know that you might lose the friendship mm. because when people are witnessed doing something bad and then they they don't mm. want you around anymore, it's weird. I'm, I'm being really serious here, I am. Uh, when you say you have to, uh, is there a mm. point, because you've mm. come gone through this experience, would you sort of say, tell you what, I'm going to walk away because it's really, you know, it's not you worth it. You've got to with and... your best mates. There's yeah. no way you can't. You can't do it with your best mates or your family. You've yeah. got to do it. You've, You've got, got to tell them. Because yeah. if you found out that you're fr- not just been cheated on, but your friends were lying to you too, mm. that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. And also, if that, yeah, I in my head I thought, if she finds out that I've not told her the truth, yeah. I'm in doggy doo-doo sure. here. Earlier this week, the Voice of the Suburb raised a, a real juicy topic that comes up from time to time. If you know your friend's being cheated on, do you mm. tell her or him? Are you the one that goes in and breaks it to them, or do you just butt out? What do you do? Daniel at Newton, tell us your story. So I don't really have a story as such. It's more like just a moral dilemma. So yeah. mm. if, it's your, if it's your mate that's being cheated on, 100% you're telling them all day of the week, right? Mm-hmm. But if your mate's doing the cheating... Are you telling? Are you telling the partner? Ooh, nah. that's a good mm. question. So I've had plenty of arguments with my family on this one, and it's a bit like, you know what I mean? The yeah. boys over over anyone else. So, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's a what very would you do? good point. Personally, you know, it, none of my business. Mm. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to get involved. Nothing to see here. Keep walking, sort of mm. stuff. Exactly. Yeah, but if it's the other way around, but awkward. Yeah, look. I don't know. It is tough because you do have a loyalty to people, don't you? Yep. I think mm. about my friends. I don't know if I would. I would encourage them to come clean. That's what I would do. Let's go to Campbelltown. John, what do you think? Um, I actually think you need to be told because I was the one that uh, got caught in the middle of it. And um, one of my, well, my best mate sat on it for about three months and he finally came out and told me that my ex-wife was playing... Uh, playing sheet hockey with my brother. Oh, oh God, John. John, that's really? a tough John. thing to forget told. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, so I've got to be honest with you, it, it's it's hard to hear, and mm. I don't see my brother or obviously my ex-wife mm. anymore, mm. but... You need to know. Um, who wants to stay in a relationship or a marriage where that kind of thing's going mm. on? Well, you don't want people, you know, talking about you behind your back. No. Um, oh, gee whiz. That is an awful situation. That is mm. woeful. Are that, John, are they still together? I don't know. I don't see either of them. And, and I, you don't care. I, I don't I want to and... sound nasty, but I've cut them both off. Yeah, and fair right, enough. Rightly so, but uh, you and your mate, did, how did your, how's your friendship with him now? Did it strengthen it? Did, uh, are you yeah. been thankful to him ever since? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think, um, I, look. In all honesty, I was a little bit angry at first because he sat on it for as long as he did, yeah, but right. I understand the situation he was in as well. Yeah, God, sure. it's stressful. All right, man, thanks yeah. for calling in, John. Horrible situation all around. Let's go to Ottawa. Steve, what's your situation? G'day, guys. Um, yeah, one night, on a Friday night, uh, my friend and I and his missus and a few other people were at the pub, and, um, yeah, I ended up going home early because I had to start work early the next morning, and... Um, I went home, only lived around the corner, and my mate that was still at the pub, had, I'd known him since high school, we had a few too many to drink, but he was still there. And I went home, didn't lock my front door, as I did back when I was younger, just went crashed it, got my gear off, went to bed. And uh, a couple of minutes later, 
uh, I'm getting woken up. It's my mate's missus. <gasps> what? Yeah, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what are you doing? And I've known him since high school. We were really good friends. So I've, I've finally got her out of my house, and she was pretty upset. It was the first time I was ever scared, believe it or not, with a woman trying yeah. to get into bed with me. Yeah. She, she was a bit crazy. And um, so I thought, you know what, this is not right. And I say, so I rang him, I'm not going to mention his name, but I rang him the next morning. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, you know, he, um, your missus, she followed me home and she just walked into my house and she tried to sleep with me, mate. Mm-hmm. And he just did not believe me. He started oh, no. abusing me. And I'm thinking, you've got to be joking. And this was years ago and we're still not friends over that. Oh, and really? it, Yeah, <laughs> ended up. He just still stayed with her and didn't believe me, and yeah, and I just couldn't believe it, mate. I was mm-hmm. thinking, what the hell? I thought no. I was doing the right thing, and I lost a good friend over it mm-hmm. and everything. All right, you know yeah. what? It's really hard because people sometimes do lose a friendship. But I think Off Air Roo said yesterday, if that happens, then you weren't meant to be friends yeah, anyway, yeah. which is hard. Still, mm, doesn't make it I easier. Guess the way to look at but it, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. I think John needs to go to yeah. gather around. We're gonna have, we've got to yeah. give up. Yeah, yeah. John. Johnny, All right. off you go. A couple of good calls there. Very yeah. good calls, guys. And it is on the text line, 04885 you If you find out something's going on with your friend or someone you know, do you tell them or do you get involved or is it none of your business? Joe. 104.7 Triple M. Stay cool with an Automasters aircon service. Call 1300 Automasters. Hey, have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Your Ruber file's been on the money a few times. Oh, so. yeah. 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 Premier yeah. says. Every morning at 7.40am, hear what's happening in Adelaide first. Mm. The rumour mill. There, we've got one on the text line, 04 1047 the Automasters text line. Uh, Vicky from Marino has said that uh, she has a rumour, and that is that Ben Cousins, uh, former AFL player for the West Coast Eagles, is going into the jungle for I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Really? I just read the last bit of her message. <laughs> No. Oh, no. don't. Anyway, sorry. Don't, sorry. She had to be oh. honest. Oh, you, oh. you do this all the time, bro. This is the second time. Well, I'm happened. a busy man. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of Vickies live in Marina. Well, that's true. All right. Well, let's, let's not, not, not say his name again. again. <laughs> There's two of them. At least it, at least it wasn't. The, so it could pregnant. be the other one. Anyway, okay. that's right. Oh. Hey, good point. It's now you're looking out for me. Anyway, oh. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here, Benny Cousins. Straight off the dance floor. Get me out of here. If anyone wants to be anonymous on this show, can put it in really big black bold at letters at the beginning yeah, of at the, the text. start of your text. Maybe line. just use a burner phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Benny won't. Wow, mind. That's I think he's just gone into hiding. Oh no, Vicky, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, don't oh. panic. Um, all right, got anyone else we want to throw on the bus? Yeah. Now yeah. read the last line of this one first, just in case. Yeah, Rue from Adelaide here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be anonymous. Okay. Oh no. All right. Adelaide is becoming the destination for big companies to launch things. Um, we've had a couple of big launches in Adelaide over the last 12 months. We yep. dropped one at uh, Weber Barbecues, which is a massive, massive business worldwide, chose Adelaide to launch their uh, new Weber's only uh, recently. I think it was yep. late last year we yep. announced it. There's another massive company that is going to do a launch in Adelaide in the middle of this year. They could have done it anywhere over the world, could have done it anywhere in Australia. They are choosing Adelaide. They're flying 500 of their top uh, executives and uh, be, uh, employees from all over the world and Australia into Adelaide for the launch of their new product. That will happen in the middle of the year. I'll give you a little clue. Anything gone. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Ah, I know that jingle. Right. Did Is that the jingle? Oh, ah, yeah. yes, it is the jingle. Oh, what a feeling. It is. Oh. All right. Now, that's not a clue. That's 500. the whole... Toyota. <laughs> but the thing is, Rue, big Ruth's company. jumping with his knees in the air. But also, economically, to fly all of those people into Adelaide and stay here, and they'll obviously go and visit and do things while they're here, that's big. That is huge for our city. Adelaide's on the map. Mm. That's good. That's exciting. All right, good room. So, middle of the year. Yeah. Which isn't far away. Not at all. Okay, I well like done. it. Good guys. All right. Oh, it's great. You've heard of the heaps good quiz on Triple M with Rue Ditson. Oh. Is S A great?
Well, now, Triple M and Credit Union SA present the Heaps Good Quiz Night live. The Arkaba. Thursday, March 21. I'm genuinely really? excited. As teams battle it out for Heaps Good Prizes. Brought to you by Credit Union SA. We see you because we're here too. Yeah. Gee, four grand first prize last no. night. And it was brilliant. Uh, the Quizard of Loz team, yes. uh, our team, yep. just didn't get anywhere near it. We weren't allowed to get near it, that's why. That's why oh, we lost. Oh, right. Did you take your foot off the pedal? Is that what happened? I was given... So, Quiz of Me, this, they do this... Um, we, we outsourced, by the way, yeah. the questions, because yes. you and I couldn't be trusted. Right. And you have a little buzzer. You don't have a sheet with paper no. and you've got your finger on the buzzer. Multiple choice. And we had to hand it around the table because whoever was holding the buzzer right. sort of got burnt quite yeah. quickly. There was a lot of fighting. Yeah, and everyone kept going... I don't want to hold it. Who you was, hold who it. Who was the captain of the table? There was no captain. It was rudderless. It was. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? I know. You you know what? Because you weren't there. That's right, Rory. Right, no, why and, didn't you, Loz, you like taking control? Why didn't you take control? I tried. They wouldn't, I, they didn't follow me. I wanted to lead and no one would follow. But everyone else in the room had a brilliant time. People were standing on chairs, dancing to Jimmy Barnes. People were doing shots. <laughs> what? It was the loosest it's quiz night I've ever been to. It was so much fun. Credit Union SA splashed out. First cr- uh, prize was four grand yeah. for a table. It was just brilliant. We've got a bit of a wrap up. As we settled into our tables, there was no pen and paper. There was an electronic button system. Hands on buzzers, guys. Here we go. Loz started pretty good, but she was very competitive. What year did King Charles last visit South Australia? When was it? 2019, 2002, 2015. I was there when he visited. I met him in 2015. Really? Yeah, I did. I did. I didn't have security. But there were some arguments about who was pressing the button the quickest. Who is that famous South Australian? Ready, Lozzie. D. So you had to look down. Oh, you were looking up and then down. Yeah, but I'm 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 the quiz teams all seem to be enjoying themselves. How's the team going? Uh, fantastic. Who's the worst performing? <coughs> we won't say. The night's going pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, the Credit Union SA team is rocking it, but we have had a little bit of debate about a few answers here and there, but we're coming okay. As long as we finish in the top half, we'll be happy with that. We just won that round, sorry. We're going all right. Uh, What's yeah. your team you name? Wicky. Our producer, Jared, interviewed Loz's parents. Now, I've got a question. Loz yeah. is getting really competitive on our table. Yep. Has she always been that way? Completely and utterly. She's had you know, four older brothers and sisters. She's just been trying to catch up since she was born. She's ruined many a family monopoly night. In the end, there could be only <laughs> one winner. Taking out tonight's quiz and our heaps of quiz, courtesy of Credit USA, goes to... Don Dunstan Short. Don Dunstan Short. Was that the team winner, Don Dunstan yeah. Short? Yeah. In reference to the quiz we ran earlier this week on, oh, on air. the pink short. That was yeah. the winning question, yeah. yeah. Oh, sounds like a great night. The Arca Bar was good. It was so good. And plenty the food, of food. Was plenty of food. Amazing. Plenty of drinks. Plenty of drinks. Yeah. Rush hour going off at the uh, OB as well. Yeah, yeah, that went well. That went well. Yeah, yeah it was a brilliant night. night. It really was. Heaps good quiz night. All thanks to Credit Union SA. Massive props to those guys for organising a wonderful night. We see you because we're here too. It's Rude, it's a lot. Triple M. On Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Loz. I need the tip. Get it straight from the horse's mouth. I'm Mr. Rare. It's time for Rue's tip of the week. Oh, it'll be a beautiful day down at Morpherville tomorrow. The weather's perfect and uh, there's some good races. And there's a special part of tomorrow too. It's the Charlie Hoyle Cup Day as well, which we've spoken about this before. It's a lad from Stanbury who lost his yeah. battle with uh, a rare cancer back in 2021. He bought it. 16 a, years of age. That's right. He bought it at Emmanuel College and mates with Bernie. And it's a good opportunity to raise awareness about cancer and raise some money about it and uh, it help so many families. So uh, support the Childhood Cancer Association as much as you can. That's in race six. And the boys from Stan, Stansbury own uh, and the number two horse in that race as well. So hopefully that'll get the chockies. But I'll and I see- think his uh, his mate's riding it too. 
Mm. Ben Is Price. He? Mm. Uh, There's a connection there, yeah. Beautiful. All right. Well, uh, have mm. a great day, everyone who goes down there, and donate respons- uh, irresponsibly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sort of. Mm. Put, yeah. Donate mm-hmm. heaps. No, you mean. Yeah. Um, all right, and you will be able to because the race before that, I've got a winner yeah. in race five. Mm, uh, okay. Just like last week, this Ooh. thing will win. Ooh. I'm pretty confident. Ooh, it will two. jump straight to the lead. Yeah. Fresh air out in front, Loz. Just, just get it in the nostrils right. and just keep going down the straight. I think mm-hmm. it'll be too good, this horse. I can't even pronounce it. It's that good. It's spelt C-E-L-U-I. C'est lui. It's French. What? Oh. What means, is it? means is it? the one. Does it? How do you pronounce it? C'est lui. <laughs> oh, that's standard <laughs> French. I can't wait for the commentator to call this coming down the straight. What will yeah, he say? Oh. C'est lui, hein? No. Oh. Being a night, he'll say C'est lui. Yeah. C'est lui. Oh, right, <laughs> Whatever he's going to call it. <laughs> let's get saying. it across the line. Race five, number two, should be winning. Have three on the nose, just like last week. Mm-hmm. Get it up for Charlie Hoyle. Well, there you go, ladies Good and gentlemen. Idea. Have a great day. Go the Crows. Go the Crows. And uh, we'll catch you. We're on tonight, Rue. They've got the A grade on tonight. On the radio. Triple M footy. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Oh. See you down there. See you there. at 5.30. <laughs>